Hi guys, welcome back to the Law of One Raw Material. We are on book four, and book four is probably my favorite book amongst all five because they go through the tarot. And I love tarot reading. I have about 30 decks. Um, I've been doing it for years, and it's kind of my wheelhouse. And I learned the tarot way before I even discovered Ra. So you could imagine, you know, uh, how excited I was when Ra started talking about the tarot and it all kind of came together, you know. And the tarot originated from the priests in Egypt that were trying to continue the Law of One teachings. So it did originate when Ra was in Egypt, when the pyramids were built. And there was also a tarot during the Sumerians time uh, they had their own kind of version of it but raw doesn't really talk about that because it's not his so as we go through this i'm going to be putting up on screen uh, the tarot images that were from the book and i'm also going to put the writer tarot up uh, being it's the most popular and probably the most accurate for our time with the symbols symbols are incredibly important you know if you can say that a uh, picture is worth a thousand words a symbol would be worth a million you know if you think about the symbolism that are on the cards and Ra also talks about how there are three avenues for learned teaching to go through the the law of one and as you ascend through the densities and the three are tarot astrology and the kabbalah the tree of life uh, i've studied all three and I just fell in love with the tarot. Some people fall in love with astrology and a lot of Hebrew words are in the Kabbalah. And some people that can speak Hebrew are really gravitated towards that. And Ra does talk about, you know, how when you choose one of these avenues, it's one's not more important than the other, but you always, you know, like a magnet, you're drawn towards one, you fall in love with one. So you, I suggest that you guys kind of take a look at all three and see which one you like learning and experiencing the most. And then you can use that as a tool uh, because the basis of all three of these avenues is the journey, your soul's journey through the densities. And it's really depicted in the tarot. It's also depicted in astrology, you know, because the 12 houses in astrology and the zodiac signs. And I studied astrology just to make me a better tarot reader because there's so much symbolism that bridges across both. And I do love the Kabbalah as well. And even studying the Kabbalah, I felt made me a better tarot reader as well. So this book really deep dives into it and I absolutely love it. And I do want to just um, discuss the archetypical mind and define it for you guys because Rob really does talk a lot about it and I don't think I've really gotten that deep involved into it. And the archetypical mind is you, your individuality, like, you know, no two snowflakes are alike. So your soul's journey Everything that you experience, all your lifetimes, where you're from, where you originated, if you're a wanderer, all the stuff that makes you, you through your experience is your archetypical mind. And if you study the archetypical mind, it is actually organized into 12 parts. That's why there's 12 uh, parts of your personality. There's 12 parts in astrology, and there is 12 parts also in the tarot. Um, I should also mention that during this book, we go through the major arcana of the tarot, not the minor arcana. So there's 78 cards in the tarot deck, and there's 22 major arcana. And we're going to be really deep diving into those. And they do kind of go into the, the journey. The fool's journey is the tarot. The tarot number zero, which in when you're doing tarot reading now, it's kind of like the first one because it's zero, which means it depicts before anything starts, you know, like, like being newborn. You don't know anything yet. You know, it's, it's, it's a clean slate, right? It's kind of like your soul, your soul before you incarnated into being anything for the first time. If you look at that, it's zero. So we actually start with number one of the tarot. And you can kind of look at the cards as uh, 
using the cards to journey and graduate through the densities. So we talk about you know, densities uh, one, two, and three. And they say that the first density is two billion years, if you can measure it in time. Because in the first density, you're actually, because you're brand new, you're actually learning just to be something. Like you're learning how to exist as something, right? And it takes like about two billion years before you can get a hold of actual existence, you know? And the second density is the longest, and Ra goes over, it's 4.6 billion years. It's the longest density throughout all the densities. It could be faster if you have lots of incarnations and, you know, um, more opportunities for expansion. But second density is really all about you know, experiencing something. So you know how to be something, and second density is about experiencing being that thing. And, and seeking consciousness and seeking growth, you know, it's about, it's about all that. And of course, third density is us right now. And it's only 75,000 years. And these are numbers that they're trying to measure in this logos because it does change from other logoses. And we all know that um, Ra was able, the collective of Ra was able to go through the densities much faster. And Ra is about to graduate into the seventh density. That's why he really doesn't talk ever much about the higher densities because Ra hasn't experienced it yet and Ra won't talk about things that he doesn't know. And third density, of course, is really about making the choice. That's why it's so short. It's only 75,000 years because the only reason we have third density is just to make that choice, whether you want to be service to others or service to self. Right? Do you want to be um, united with the universe or do you want to be separate? Do you want to experience being separate from everything? And it's that choice that this 75 years and all these lifetimes that we're living here are meant to uh, experience just to make that choice. And it's a very, very hard density. It seems long and each lifetime is so challenging, but it's really just a, a blink in your soul's journey. And fourth density and up is all just really about refining that choice. You know, polishing and getting better and better at being more and more of that choice. Because as you go up through the densities, you then graduate into creating universes, right? When you have all this experience of the lower densities, you now have the ability to just create and heal things, right? So those were the higher densities after that. And we'll, we'll probably get into that. And if you want a little bit more um, explanation about making the choice, I did put a video about that. Uh, and I think it's titled, how, you know, our, how is it that we're in third density now, but our higher self is in sixth density. So I deep dive into that if you want a little bit more clarity on it. So sorry for the long intro, but I hope it helped you kind of lay down a bit of a foundation about what this book is going to be about and what it's going to go through. And I'm really excited to be able to bring it to you like this with the tarot. So let's get into it. Here's the beginning of book four of the Law of One Raw Material. The Law of One, book four, session 76, February 3rd, 1982. Raw, I am raw. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, could you first please give me an indication of the condition of the instrument? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument is in a state of physical complex bankruptcy, which has existed for some of the measure you call time. The vital energies are normal with a strong spiritual complex counterpart and will lending substance to the mind-body-spirit. Complex energy levels. Questioner, will our continued communication with Ra be deleterious to the physical energies of the instrument? Ra, I am Ra. We may answer in two modes. Firstly, if the instrument were thusly dedicated to this use with no transfer of energy of physical complex nature, it would begin to call upon the vital energy itself and this, done in any substantive measure, is actively deleterious to a mind-body-spirit complex if that complex wishes further experience in the illusion, which it now distorts. Secondly, if care is taken, firstly, to monitor the outer parameters of the instrument, 
then to transfer physical energy by sexual transfer, by magical protection, and, lastly, by the energetic displacements of thought forms energizing the instrument. During contact there is no difficulty in that there is no worsening of the instrument's mind-body-spirit. Complex distortions of strength weakness. It is to be noted that the instrument, by dedicating itself to this service, attracts greetings of which you are aware. These are inconvenient but, with care taken, need not be lastingly deleterious either to the instrument or the contact. Questioner, of the three things that you mentioned that we could do for the instrument's benefit, would you clarify the last one? I didn't quite understand what you meant. Ra, I am Ra. As the entity which you are allows its being to empathize with any other being, so then it may choose to share with the other self those energies which may be salubrious to the other self. The mechanism of these energy transfers is the thought or, more precisely, the thought form for any. Thought is a form or symbol or thing that is an object seen in time-space reference. Questioner, has our use of the banishing ritual of the lesser pentagram been of any value and what is its effect? Ra, I am Ra. This group's use of the banishing ritual of the lesser pentagram has been increasingly efficacious. Its effect is purification, cleansing, and protection of the place of working. The efficacy of this ritual is only beginning to be, shall we say, at the lower limits of the truly magical. In doing the working those aspiring to adepthood have done the equivalent of beginning the schoolwork, many grades ahead. For the intelligent student this is not to be discouraged, rather to be encouraged is the homework, the reading, the writing, the arithmetic, as you might metaphorically call the elementary steps towards the study of being. It is the being that informs the working, not the working that informs the being. Therefore, we may leave you to the work you have begun. Questioner, would it be beneficial for us to perform the banishing ritual more in this room? Ra, I am Ra. It is beneficial to regularly work in this place. Questioner, I am sorry that we have had such a long delay between the last session and this one. It couldn't be helped I guess. Could you please tell me the origin of the tarot? Ra, I am Ra. The origin of this system of study and divination is twofold. Firstly, there is that influence which, coming in a distorted fashion from those who were priests attempting to teach the law of one in Egypt, gave form to the understanding, if you will pardon the misnomer, which they had received. These forms were then made a regular portion of the learned teachings of an initiate. The second influence is that of those entities in the lands you call you are, Chaldea, and Mesopotamia who, from old, had received the, shall we say, data for which they called having to do with the heavens. Thusly we find two methods of divination being melded into one with uneven results, the, as you call it, astrology and the form being combined to suggest what you might call the correspondences, which are typical of the distortions, you may see as attempts to view archetypes. Questioner, then am I correct in assuming that the priests of Egypt, in attempting to convert knowledge that they had received initially from Ra into understandable symbology, constructed and initiated the concept of the tarot? Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct with the addition of the Sumerian influence. Questioner, were Ra's teachings focusing on the archetypes for this logos and the methods of achieving a very close approach to the archetypical configuration? Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct without being true. We, of Ra, are humble messengers of the law of one. We seek to teach learn this single law. During the space-time of the Egyptian teach learning we work to bring the mind complex, the body complex, and the spirit complex into an initiated state in which the entity could contact intelligent energy, and so become teach learner itself so that healing and the fruits of study could be offered to all. The study of the roots of mind is a portion of the vivification of the mind complex and, as we have noted, the thorough study of the portion of the roots of mind called archetypical is an interesting and necessary portion of the process, as a whole. Questioner, is there, in Ross' opinion, any present-day value for the use of the tarot as an aid in the evolutionary process? Ra, I am Ra. We shall repeat information. It is appropriate to study one form of constructed and organized distortion of the archetypical mind in depth in order to arrive at the position of being able to become, and to experience archetypes at will. You have three basic choices. You may choose astrology, the twelve signs, as you call these portions of your planet's energy web, 
and what has been called the Ten Planets. You may choose the tarot with its 22 so-called major arcana. You may choose the study of the so-called Tree of Life with its 10 sephiroth and the 22 relationships between the stations. It is well to investigate each discipline, not as a dilettante, but as one who seeks the touchstone, one who wishes to feel the pull of the magnet. One of these studies will be more attractive to the seeker. Let the seeker, then, investigate the archetypical mind using, basically, one of these three disciplines. After a period of study, the discipline mastered sufficiently, the seeker may then complete the more important step, that is, the moving beyond the written in order to express in a unique fashion its understanding, if you may again pardon the noun, of the archetypical mind. Questioner, would I be correct in saying that the archetypes of this particular logos are somewhat unique with respect to the rest of the creation? The systems of study that we have just talked about would not translate quickly or easily in other parts of the creation. This is a very difficult question to state. Could you clear that up for me? Ra, I am Ra. We may draw from the welter of statement which you offer the question we believe you ask. Please request Ion if we have mistaken your query. The archetypical mind is that mind which is peculiar to the logos under which influence you are at this space-time distorting your experiences. There is no other logos the archetypical mind of which would be the same any more than the stars would appear the same from another planet in another galaxy. You may correctly infer that the closer logoi are indeed closer in archetypes. Questioner, since Ra evolved initially on Venus Ra is of the same archetypical origin as that which we experience here. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, but I am assuming that the concepts of the tarot and the magical concepts of the tree of life, etc. were not in use by Ra. I suspect, possibly, some form of astrology was a previous raw concept. This is just a guess. Am I correct? Ra, I am raw. To express Ra's methods of study of the archetypical mind under the system of distortions which we enjoyed, would be to skew your own judgment of that which is appropriate for the system of distortions forming the conditions in which you learn teach. Therefore, we must invoke the law of confusion. Questioner, I am going to ask some questions now that may be a little off the center of what we are trying to do. I'm not sure because I'm trying to, with these questions, unscramble something that I consider very basic to what we are doing. Please forgive my lack of ability in questioning since this is a difficult concept for me. Could you give me an idea of the length of the first and second densities as they occurred for this planet? Ra, I am Ra. There is no method of estimation of the time-space before timelessness gave way in your first density. To the beginnings of your time, the measurement would be vast and yet this vastness is meaningless. Upon the entry into the constructed space-time your first density spanned a bridge of space-time and time-space of perhaps two billion of your years. Second density is more easily estimated and represents your longest density in terms of the span of space-time. We may estimate that time as approximately 4. 6 billion years. These approximations are exceedingly rough due to the somewhat uneven development which is characteristic of creations, which are built upon the foundation stone of free will. Questioner, did you state that second density was 4.6 billion years? Is that correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, then we have a third density that is, comparatively speaking, the twinkling of an eye, the snap of a finger in time compared to the others. Why is the third density cycled so extremely rapidly compared to the first and second? Ra, I am Ra. The third density is a choice. Questioner, third density, then, compared to the rest of the densities, all of them, is nothing but a uniquely short period of what we consider to be time and is for the purpose of this choice. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is precisely correct. The prelude to choice must encompass the laying of the foundation, the establishment of the illusion and the viability of that which can be made spiritually viable. The remainder of the densities is continuous refining of the choice. This also is greatly lengthened, as you would use the term. The choice is, as you put it, the work of a moment but is the axis upon which the creation turns. Questioner, is this third density choice the same throughout all of the creation of which you are aware? Ra, I am Ra. 
We are aware of creations in which third density is lengthier and more space-time is given to the choosing. However, the proportions remain the same, the dimensions all being somewhat etiolated and weakened by the logos to have a variant experience of the creator. This creation is seen by us to be quite vivid. Questioner, I didn't understand what you meant by what you said, as seen by you to be quite vivid. What did you mean? Ra, I am Ra. This creation is somewhat more condensed by its logos than some other logoi have chosen. Thus each experience of the creator by the creator in this system of distortions is, relatively speaking, more bright or, as we said, vivid. Questioner, I am assuming that upon entry into third density, for this planet, disease did not exist in any form. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is incorrect. Questioner, what disease or form of disease was there and why did this exist at the beginning of the third density? Ra, I am Ra. Firstly, that which you speak of as disease is a functional portion, the body complex, which offers the body complex the opportunity to cease viability. This is a desirable body complex function. The second portion of the answer has to do with second density other selves of a microscopic, as you would call it, size which have in some forms long existed and perform their service by aiding the physical body complex in its function of ceasing viability at the appropriate space-time. Questioner. What I am trying to understand is the difference between the plan of the logos for these second density entities and the generation of what I would guess to be more or less a runaway array of feedback to create various physical problems to act as catalyst in our present third density condition. Could you give me an indication of whether my thinking is anywhere near right on that? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument's physical body complex is becoming more distorted towards pain. We shall, therefore, speak to this subject as our last full query of this working. Your query contains some internal confusion which causes the answer to be perhaps more general than desired. We invite refinements of the query. The Logos plan for entities of mind-body-spirit complex to gain experience until the amount of experience was sufficient for an incarnation. This varied only slightly from second-density entities whose mind-body complexes existed for the purpose of experiencing growth and seeking consciousness. As the third density upon your planet proceeded, as has been discussed, the need for the physical body complex to cease became more rapidly approached due to intensified and more rapidly gained catalyst. This catalyst was not being properly assimilated. Therefore, the, shall we say, Lifetimes needed to be shorter that learning might continue to occur with the proper rhythm and increment. Thus more and more opportunities have been offered as your density has progressed for disease. May we ask if there are further brief queries before we close? Questioner, I have one question that is possibly of no value. You don't have to expand on it, but there is a crystal skull in the possession of a woman near Toronto. It may be of some value in investigating these communications with Ra since I think possibly this had some origin from Ra. Can you tell me anything about that? And then is there anything that we can do to improve the contact or to make the instrument more comfortable? Ra, I am Ra. Although your query is one which uncovers interesting material we cannot answer due to the potential an answer may have for affecting your actions. The appurtenances are carefully placed and requisite care taken. We are appreciative. All is well. I am Ra. I leave you, my friends, in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, glorying and rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. The Law of One, Book 4, Session 77, February 10, 1982. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, could you please give me an indication of the condition of the instrument? Ra, I am Ra. It is as previously stated. Questioner, was the instrument under attack just prior to this session? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, is there anything that we could do to help protect the instrument from these attacks prior to the session? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, what could we do? Ra, I am Ra. Your group could refrain from continuing this contact.
Questioner, is that the only thing that we could do? Ra, I am Ra. That is the only thing you could do which you are not already attempting with a whole heart. Questioner, I have three questions that the instrument asked me to ask which I will get out of the way first. She wants to know if the preparation for her hospital experience could be improved if she should ever have to repeat it. Ra, I am Ra. All was done well with one exception. The instrument was instructed to spend space-time contemplating itself as the creator. This, done in a more determined fashion, would be beneficial at times when the mind complex is weakened by severe assaults, upon the distortions of the body complex towards pain. There is no necessity for negative thought forms regardless of pain distortions. The elimination of such creates the lack of possibility for negative elementals and other negative entities to use these thought forms to create the worsening of the mind complex deviation from the normal distortions of cheerfulness anxiety. Questioner. The instrument would also like to know if what we call tuning could be improved during times when we do not communicate with Ra. Ra, I am Ra. That which has been stated in regard to the latter question will suffice to point the way for the present query. Questioner, finally, she wishes to know why several days ago her heart rate went up to 115 per minute, and why she had extreme pain in her stomach. Was that an Orion greeting? Ra, I am Ra. Although this experience was energized by the Orion group the events mentioned, as well as others more serious, were proximally caused by the ingestion of certain foodstuffs in what you call your tablet form. Questioner, can you tell me what these tablets were, specifically? Ra, I am Ra. We examine this query for the law of confusion and find ourselves close to the boundary, but acceptably so. The substance which caused the bodily reaction of the heartbeat was called pituitone by those which manufacture it. That which caused the difficulty which seemed to be cramping of the lower abdominal musculature but was, in fact, more organic in nature was a substance called spleen tone. This instrument has a physical body complex of complicated balances which afford it physical existence. Were the view taken that certain functions and chemicals found in the healthy, as you call it, Body complex are lacking in this one and, therefore, simply must be replenished. The intake of the many substances which this instrument began would be appropriate. However, this particular physical vehicle has, for approximately 25 of your years, been vital due to the spirit, the mind, and the well-being harmoniously dedicated to fulfilling the service it chose to offer. Therefore, physical healing techniques are inappropriate, whereas mental and spiritual healing techniques are beneficial. Questioner, is there any technique that we could use that we have not been using that would be beneficial for the instrument in this case? Ra, I am Ra. We might suggest, without fractiousness, too. Firstly, let the instrument remove the possibility of further ingestion of this group of foodstuffs. Secondly, each of the group may become aware of the will to a greater extent. We cannot instruct upon this, but merely indicate, as we have previously, that it is a vital key to the evolution of the mind-body-spirit complex. Questioner, thank you. I would like to go back to the plan of this Logos for its creation and examine the philosophical basis that is the foundation for what was created in this local creation and the philosophy of the plan for experience. I am assuming that I am correct in stating that the foundation for this, as has been stated many times before, is the first distortion. After that, what was the plan in the philosophical sense? Ra, I am Ra. We cannot reply due to a needed portion of your query which has been omitted, that is, do we speak of this particular logos? Questioner, that is correct. I am asking with respect to this particular sublogos, our son. Ra, I am Ra. This query has substance. We shall begin by turning to an observation of a series of concept complexes of which you are familiar as the tarot. The philosophy was to create a foundation, first of mind, then of body, and then of spiritual complex. Those concept complexes you call the tarot lie then in three groups of seven, the mind cycle, one through seven, the physical complex cycle, eight through fourteen, the spiritual complex cycle, fifteen through twenty-one. The last concept complex may best be termed the choice. Upon the foundation of the transformation of each complex, with free will guided by the root concepts offered in these cycles, 
The logos offered this density, the basic architecture of a building, and the constructing and synthesizing of data, culminating in the choice. Questioner, then to condense your statement, I see it meaning that there are seven basic philosophical foundations for mental experience, seven for bodily, seven for spiritual, and that these produce the polarization that we experience sometime during the third density cycle. Am I correct? Ra, I am Ra. You are correct in that you perceive the content of our prior statement with accuracy. You are incorrect in that you have no mention of the, shall we say, location of all of these concept complexes, that is, they exist within the roots of the mind and it is from this resource that their guiding influence and leitmotifs may first be traced. You may further note that each foundation is itself not single, but a complex of concepts. Furthermore, there are relationships betwixt mind, body, and spirit of the same location in octave, for instance, 1, 8, 15, and relationships within each octave which are helpful in the pursuit of the choice by the mind-body-spirit complex. The logos under which these foundations stand. One leitmotif, lit, leading motive. In music, a distinguishing theme or melodic phrase representing and recurring with a given character, situation, or emotion in an opera is one of free will. Thusly the foundations may be seen to have unique facets and relationships for each mind-body-spirit complex. Only 22, the choice, is relatively fixed and single. Questioner. Then I am probably having a problem with the concept of time since it appears that the Logos was aware of the polarization choice. It seems that this choice for polarization at the end of third density is an important philosophical plan for the experience past. Third density. Am I correct in assuming that this process is a process to create the proper or desired experience that will take place in the creation, after third density is complete? Ra, I am Ra. These philosophical foundations are those of third density. Above this density, there remains the recognition of the architecture of the logos, but without the veils which are so integral, a part of the process of making the choice in third density. Questioner. The specific question that I had was that it seems to me that the choice was planned to create intense polarization past third density, so that experience would be intense past third density. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. Given that our interpretation of your sound vibration complexes is appropriate, this is incorrect. The intensity of fourth density is that of the refining of the rough-hewn sculpture. This is, indeed, in its own way. Quite intense causing the mind-body-spirit complex to move ever inward and onward in its quest for fuller expression. However, in third density, the statue is forged in the fire. This is a type of intensity which is not the property of fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh densities. Questioner, what I am really attempting to understand, since all of these 21 philosophical bases result in the 22nd, which is the choice is why this choice is so important, why the Logos seems to put so much emphasis on this choice, and what function this choice of polarity has. Precisely, in the evolution or the experience of that which is created by the Logos. Ra, I am Ra. The polarization or choosing of each mind-body-spirit is necessary for harvestability from third density. The higher densities do their work due to the polarity gained in this choice. Questioner. Would it be possible for this work of our density to be performed if all of the sublogoi chose the same polarity, in any particular expression or evolution of a logos? Let us make the assumption that our sun created nothing but, through the first distortion, positive polarity. There was no product except positive polarity. Would work then be done in fourth density and higher as a function of only the positive polarization evolving from the original creation of our sublogos? Ra, I am Ra. Elements of this query illustrate the reason I was unable to answer your previous question without knowledge of the logos involved. To turn to your question, there were logoi which chose to set the plan for the activation of mind-body-spirit complexes through each true color body without recourse to the prior application of free will. It is, to our knowledge, only in an absence of free will that the conditions of which you speak obtain. In such a procession of densities you find an extraordinarily long, as you measure time, third density, likewise, fourth density. Then, as the entities begin to see the creator, there is a very rapid, as you measure time, procession towards the eighth density. This is due to the fact that one who knows not, cares not. 
Let us illustrate by observing the relative harmony and unchanging quality of existence in one of your, as you call it, primitive tribes. The entities have the concepts of lawful and taboo, but the law is inexorable and all events occur as predestined. There is no concept of right and wrong, good or bad. It is a culture in monochrome. In this context you may see the one you call Lucifer as the true light bringer in that the knowledge of good and evil both precipitated the mind-body spirits of this logos from the unique conditions of constant contentment and also provided the impetus to move, to work, and to learn. Those logoi whose creations have been set up without free will have not, in the feeling of those logoi, given the creator the quality and variety of experience of itself as have those logoi which have incorporated free will as paramount. Thusly you find those logoi moving through the timeless states at what you would see as a later space-time to choose the free will character, when elucidating the foundations of each logos. Questioner, I guess, under the first distortion, it was the free will of the logos to choose to evolve without free will. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner, do the logoi that choose this type of evolution choose both the service to self and the service to others path for different logoi, or do they choose just one of the paths? Ra, I am Ra. Those, what you would call, early logoi which chose lack of free will foundations, to all extents with no exceptions, founded logoi of the service to others path. They, shall we say, saga of polarity, its consequences and limits, were unimagined until experienced. Questioner. In other words you are saying that originally the logoi, that did not choose this free will path did not choose it simply because they had not conceived of it and that later logoi, extending the first distortion farther down through their evolution, experienced it as an outcropping or growth from that extension of the first distortion. Am I correct in saying that? Ra, I am Ra. Yes. Questioner. Then did this particular logos that we experience plan for this polarity and know all about it prior to its plan? I suspect that this is what happened. Ra, I am Ra. This is quite correct. Questioner, in that case, as a logos, you would have an advantage of selecting the form of acceleration, you might say, of spiritual evolution by planning what we call the major archetypical philosophical foundations and planning these as a function of the polarity that would be gained in third density. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is exquisitely correct. Questioner, in that case, it seems that a thorough knowledge of the precise nature of these philosophical foundations would be of primary importance to the study of evolution of mind, body, and spirit, and I would like to carefully go through each, starting with the mind. Is this agreeable with Ra? Ra, I am Ra. This is agreeable with two requests which must be made. Firstly, that an attempt be made to state the student's grasp of each archetype. We may then comment. We cannot teach learn to the extent of learn teaching. Secondly, we request that it be constantly kept before the mind, as the candle before the eye, that each mind-body-spirit complex shall and should and, indeed, must perceive each archetype, if you use this convenient term, in its own way. Therefore, you may see that precision is not the goal, rather the quality of general concept complex perception is the goal. Questioner, now, there are several general concepts that I would like to be sure that we have clear, before going into this process and I will certainly adhere to the requests that you have just stated. When our logos designed this particular evolution of experience it decided to use a system of which we spoke allowing for polarization, through total free will. How is this different from the logos that does not do this? I see the logos creating the possibility of increase in vibration through the densities. How are the densities provided for and set by the logos, if you can answer this? Ra, I am Ra. This shall be the last full query of this working. The psychic attack upon this instrument has, shall we say, left scars which must be tended, in our own opinion, in order to maintain the instrument. Let us observe your second density. Many come more rapidly to third density than others not because of an innate efficiency of catalysis but because of unusual opportunities for investment. In just such a way those of fourth density may invest third, those of fifth density may invest fourth. When fifth density has been obtained the process takes upon itself a momentum based upon the characteristics of wisdom when applied to circumstance. The logos itself 
then, in these instances, provides investment opportunities, if you wish to use that term. May we inquire if there are any brief queries at this space-time? Questioner, is there anything that we can do after this contact to increase the comfort as related to the psychic attack, or is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable and to improve the contact in the present situation? Ra, I am Ra. The faculties of healing which each has commenced energizing may be used. The entity may be encouraged to remain motionless for a period. As it will not appreciate this, we suggest the proper discussion. The physical appurtenance called the censor was just a degree off, this having no deeper meaning. We do ask, for reasons having to do with the physical comfort of the instrument, that you continue in your careful efforts at alignment. You are conscientious. All is well. We leave you, my friends, in the glorious love and light of the one Creator. Go forth. Therefore, rejoicing in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. I am Ra. Adonai.